Hey everyone, welcome back to Reissued. If you're new here, my name is Andrew. Today we're going to be transforming two pieces that I found at the ReStore. Both of these have a lot of potential but need some love, so we're giving them some love today. We're going to be cutting apart, putting back together, sanding down, staining, painting. We're also going to be doing a really cool painted detail on the sides of the drawers. I've seen people do this with transfers and wallpaper and various things, so this is by no means a new idea. However, you know I'm going to give it the Reissued flavor and do it my way. I can't wait to show you what that looks like. Also, since we're furniture flipping this week, I thought we would talk a little bit about the furniture flipping trend, how social media has affected the way that we're making over furniture, and address the question, when does thrifted furniture actually need flipping? I'm sure we all have different thoughts about this. Be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments. Also, if you make it to the end of this video and you decide that you like it, please remember to hit the like button and be sure that you subscribe to see how I incorporate these pieces into my home makeover. Can't wait to get started. Let's jump on in. First up, let's assess our thrifted pieces. I purchased this creamy pale yellow dresser for $30 at the ReStore last year. Pros, vintage look, clean lines, and campaign style hardware. Cons, it's missing a drawer, and I'm not really feeling the yellow tone of the drawers. Plus, it has its share of little chips and stains they could use a refresh. Let's plan to cut off the bottom to resolve the missing drawer and paint this in a solid color. This nightstand I got last month for $15 at the ReStore is a little bit trickier. Pros. The sculptural detail at the front is beautiful, and the gold hardware is nice. Cons. I don't really like the bottom heavy look of this base piece, or the laminate fake wood look top. Plus, this is going to go in my bedroom, and I already have a lot of warm wood in that room. So even though I don't mind this wood finish, I would love for this to lean almost black to give some contrast in the room. And I would prefer for it to sit up on some legs to lighten the look just a bit. Let's get started. First, we need to remove some of the hardware and assess the structure of the pieces so we know what's possible. The metal campaign hardware on the dresser was nailed in. Ugh. So we need to pry these off carefully. My dad is better at this kind of thing than I am, but I'm finding a groove. Let's also ditch this horrifying liner paper. I might replace it with another paper later, but I haven't found the right thing just yet. In order to cut off a drawer, we first need to remove this kick plate base piece. We'll reattach this after we cut to keep the integrity and function of the original base. <laughs> Is it paint that's stuck on there? Oh, okay. It's got nails in it. This is the kind of process that seems simple in theory, but turns out to take forever. We're battling multiple pieces that make up the structure, nails, staples, and wood glue that all require a lot of prying. After an eternity of hammering and prying, we got the shelf to slide out fully and leave us with a clear line to cut. So after we make sure that we mark the right spot for the drawer to fit perfectly, let's cut. All right, so we cut off the bottom on this and now we're gonna be cutting a groove to go along the edge. When we were taking it apart, we noticed that the bottom pieces uh, were attached in a groove and we wanted to remove those and reattach them at the new bottom because we think it'll give a little bit more stability. So once we cut those grooves, we'll be able to put those same pieces back in there and then put the base back on. Here's the thing about DIY construction. Any project is way more straightforward if you have the right tool for the job. So this notch cut might've been way simpler with the router or the right jig but my dad is using the circular saw in two perpendicular cuts with the blade set at a certain depth to achieve the groove we need.
With those cuts made, we can reinsert all the pieces as they were on the bottom before. And the dresser structure is complete. I think this new height is going to be perfect in the guest room, maybe with a mirror above. On to the nightstand. I'm not as sure of the plan for this one, but there's less complex structure underneath here. So let's just start by cutting off the bottom. Okay, so it's a couple days later and I'm back in the bedroom trying to figure out what to do with these nightstands. Again, my worry with the nightstand is that if I put on the legs that I thrifted, they would be too spindly and the bed is already kind of spindly and the other piece that's across from it is kind of spindly and it might feel too similar. So we're exploring options for putting more of a solid base on it, unlike how it was before where it just came straight down to maybe have something that sits inside kind of like the white dresser. Not sure about that just yet. I'm having a hard time knowing how high this nightstand stand should be because I like it being a bit shorter but then the sewing table on the other side is quite tall too tall so there's sort of a mismatch happening there and so I had the thought what if I put the new legs that I thrifted on the sewing table and switched those out that would drop it significantly and allow the other nightstand to be shorter I would consider just cutting down the legs on the sewing table but it does have a really beautiful vintage powder blue sewing machine in it. And I have the thought that maybe someday when I have the time and the energy and someone with the expertise, that maybe that sewing machine could work for me. And so I don't really want to alter that piece in any permanent way. So unscrewing the legs and putting the other legs back on would be a good sort of like interim solution to make this work for this space. After much thinking, arranging, propping, assessing, and experimenting, we opted for this structure on the bottom, with the piece we cut off the bottom sitting up inside a bit with a spacer piece to hold it in. This feels a bit like the base on the dresser, but this time we're adding legs to make it the right height. These metal legs came off an Ikea shoe cabinet that I don't need anymore, and my dad cut some simple back legs that you won't really see too much. This combo will bring the piece to the exact same height as the sewing table on its new legs. Structure done. Okay, it's a new day here and I think we found some good solutions for the legs and the bases. I'm still not sure what kind of top I want to do on the nightstand. I've had like a million ideas about what to do for this. Ideally, I'd love to put a piece of black acrylic on top, but acrylic is so expensive. Same thing with custom cut glass. I'm really trying to keep the cost low here. So at this point, I'm thinking we're just going to do some sort of paint treatment on it, but I'm not sure. So we're going to go ahead and move forward with sanding and painting these today. And then hopefully a solution will emerge and we'll get some clarity there and can move forward. All right, next step is my favorite step, sanding. I'm going to start here on the dresser, just going over it with a really light 220 grit sandpaper. Not really looking to do that much except just smooth out any uneven areas and just rough up the finish a tiny bit so the paint will adhere more successfully. And then on the nightstand piece, that one will require a little bit more sanding because I'm trying to remove the finish in order to stain it. Hopefully that's not going to be too hard. I haven't really done much sanding on a veneer type piece like that before, so I don't want to do too much sanding. But at the same time, I don't want my stain to just like bounce off and sit on top. I really want it to be able to adhere well and look really natural as well. Here we go, let's sand. So obviously when you're sanding something, the more you hit an area, the lighter that becomes and the more it gets stripped off of it. So the high points here are definitely appearing a lot lighter than the rest of it, which honestly I'm not mad about. I think it sort of brings out the dimension in the piece. I really wanted to leave the sides of these as is, um, as a base for my paint treatment later. However, there was some issues with some like globs of glue up here on the side. So I started sanding and once you start sanding, you can't really leave it with like part of it light and part of it dark and the glue is not coming off so I think I'm just gonna have to either keep taking this all the way back to natural wood and maybe stain it before I paint it or maybe just stain it the same as the rest of the piece and paint with something different than I was thinking I'm not really sure what to do 
I ended up removing the glue successfully with Goof Off Glue Remover and sanding the sides down fully. Then I stained the sides in Colonial Maple to try to match the original color. The natural shades of the wood sides were all over the place, but there's not too much we can do about that. This whole thing is such an annoying extra step, but it's worth taking the time to do it right. All right, we're back today and ready to paint the images on the sides of the drawers. For the white dresser, I opted to use this MC Escher image. You know I've taken inspiration from his work for several areas of my house. The stained glass window in the half bathroom, the bird wallpaper in the guest bathroom. And so I thought it would be fitting to continue his theme toward the front of the house to the guest room where this dresser is gonna live, I think and go with this image. I think it'll be cool to have a portion of the image on each drawer, so as you pull them out, it doesn't really make sense, but then with them all together, it all kind of adds up. On the nightstand, I'm gonna use the little Sistine Chapel hands doing the God hand on the top drawer and the Adam hand on the bottom drawer, so when they pull out fully, they almost touch. I think that's gonna be kind of fun. With both of these pieces, they're quite architectural and quite square, and so I was looking for imagery that was a little bit more flowy, a little bit more organic, and I think that the human forms of these are gonna be really beautiful on there. Since I'm painting on unpainted wood, the margin of error for mistakes will be super slim. So I'm opting to blow up my reference images and trace an outline to start from. I decide on the proportions of the design by measuring my drawers and the space that will be in between them when they pull out from the dresser. Then I pay attention to the pixel count in Keynote to scale the mock-up accurately. I place my desired image and use that pixel count to arrive at the proper size for my printouts. I use the same method of measuring, scaling at rasterbader.net, and printing that I've used in several of my art videos. You can check those out for more details on the process. However, this time I'll add that you need to be sure to print scaled at 100% to get the intended size. I've had issues in the past with my images printing smaller than I need when the scaling is shrunk down due to printing margins. Problem solved. With my images printed and cut out, I can line up my drawers with the proper spacing in between them and trace the outlines onto my drawer sides. Let's paint! For the Sistine Chapel hands, I'm starting with a fine brush using a combo of black and burnt umber acrylics mixed with a fair amount of water. The burnt umber warms up the tone of the black, and the water gives some slip and transparency. I had originally intended to do more of a two-tone look for this design, more like a pen and ink illustration, but with the shading of the original piece and the transparency of my paint, I was able to layer things up and get a more dimensional look. Once all the hands are painted, I go in with the satin acrylic varnish to seal in the sides. Now let's go ahead and address the outside of both pieces to move things along. The dresser is getting a coat of this high gloss enamel spray paint in almond. This paint has great coverage and captures the same feeling as the original finish, minus the weird yellow tones. For the nightstand, I opted to go with a similar gloss enamel paint in black for the fake wood top. I gave it a light sanding with my 220 grit sandpaper before spraying. My dad jumped in to help me get a super even finish. I tend to worry about getting too much paint on and having puddles or drips, but the key is to get enough paint on at once to saturate the surface evenly and achieve that flawless glass-like finish. This is exactly how I wanted this top to look. Let's go ahead and spray the hardware as well. I didn't really need to spray the handles, but better to have the gold color match the legs. 
After letting everything dry overnight, we can work on the finish on the rest of the nightstand. Okay, so for the nightstand, I was really, really wanting to do this Shosugi Ban technique. This was a really hot trend a couple years ago, but this is a traditional Japanese art form of where you burn wood until it's black. And so I knew I wanted this nightstand to be black. I thought that would be fun. I haven't seen anyone do it on a piece of furniture like this before, for good reason, because there is veneer on the sides of this, and I don't think that would burn very well. So my dreams were crushed. However, I did find this product that is meant to give that kind of look, that charred wood look. You can see right there on the label that this is supposed to be done on unfinished wood, and clearly my piece has some finish on it. Despite the amount of sanding that I did on it, I don't think it's ever going to be completely like stripped down, so we're going to take a calculated risk today. We are going to put some of this on there and see what happens. I actually did a sample of this with a piece that we had cut off. It seemed to mostly seep into the grain and then not necessarily cover the part that had any kind of finish, but I kind of like that look, so we're going to give it a go with this and just see what happens. Okay, so I'm not sure how I feel about this. Um, I'm sure you will let me know in the comments what you're thinking about this right now. When I did my sample, I was able to lay it flat and I just sort of like let it puddle up there and then gradually sink in and then I kind of wiped off the excess. Here, it sort of puddled randomly based on like wherever the stain wanted to run. So it kind of has like a mix of the distressed look and also sort of water stained. Part of me thinks it's kind of cool and I haven't seen it before. I'm probably gonna walk away for the evening. This stuff is like basically dry to touch already, so I might take this inside into the room and see how it looks with everything else. I'm still really hesitant to paint this black because I just feel like it would sit in the room like a black hole, whereas this might read really black in that dark room already. But I also don't want it to look like I just did a really bad stain job or that it's trying to be this kind of like farmhouse distressed thing that is really not appropriate for this style of piece. So I don't know. Hit me up in the comments. I'm sure you'll give it to me straight. Okay, so I didn't have to sleep on it. I already know I'm not loving it. Problem is that if I think back to what I really loved about this piece at the beginning when I thrifted this, it was the really sculptural shape on the front of the drawers. And I feel like this is just obscuring that entirely. The other problem here is that this stuff is water soluble. So it's very possible that if I wet this and wipe it off, it will just come right off. So I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna wet a cloth, wipe it down, see what happens. I think we have a winner. I'm really happy with how this looks. It's a lot more like my sample, which to be fair, I did wipe that one down more so that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the wiping off camera and I'll pick you up tomorrow. Hey everybody, welcome to my kitchen where we address the serious questions. Throughout the planning of this video and the creation process, I've been thinking a lot about furniture flipping as a concept. I see a lot of videos on social media where people are flipping their furniture and they get to the end and I kind of like the way that it looked better before. But then I look in the comments and I see that I'm not the only one. And so to me, that kind of begs the question, when we are furniture flipping, when is it appropriate to make big drastic changes to the look of the piece? It's one thing to repair and restore a piece, but it's another thing to like sand it down and then paint it, whatever trendy color is happening that day. Of course, there's gonna be varying opinions on this. And of course, if you buy a piece of furniture, it's yours, you can do whatever you want with it. I just have some kind of thoughts and guidelines about when it's good to make those big changes. Two things. Firstly, condition of the item is key. Sometimes things are just damaged beyond repair, and so the easiest thing is to go in with some sort of filler and paint the whole piece, especially with pieces that have veneer on the top. That's a very tricky process to restore it, so I can see why that might be a better option, better than having that piece go in the landfill. The second thing, maybe this is silly and maybe this is just me, but it sort of depends on whether you're planning to love the piece or list the piece. I'll admit that I'm a little bit more critical of a flip if someone is just trying to turn around and sell it, especially if I feel like they're just trying to make a piece fit into whatever trend is happening now, whether or not that like makes the piece look its best. Versus if you acquire a piece and you're trying to incorporate it into your space and you're planning to keep it in your home and love it for a long time, by all means, do whatever you want with it. A good example of that is my kitchen island. That is an antique piece that was pine, never painted, and I painted it. 
that felt like what needed to happen to ground the center of my kitchen and just give everything a really unified look. I love the way the piece looked in the pine, but I also love how it looks this way and this works better for my space. I plan to have this in my house forever, so it just made sense for me. So I have three tips here in terms of if you're on the fence about deciding what to do with the piece, these might be helpful for you. So first, remember that every makeover doesn't have to be a massive transformation. That's part of the impact on social media on this whole furniture flipping thing is that we want to see like a major before and after, even when a piece doesn't really need that, right? And I felt a little bit self-conscious when planning this video, you know, with painting the dresser like basically the same color that it already was, you know, is that exciting enough? Are people going to want to watch that? But the piece was really beautiful as it was and I just wanted to sort of give that a little bit of a refresh. Secondly, Work with what you have, not against it. So this is where I'm struggling a little bit with the nightstand is I feel like I'm trying to force it into something that it doesn't want to be. Maybe that's going to work out in this case, but I think at the end of the day, it's best to look at a piece and really see what that's bringing forward stylistically and embrace it and really make those features shine. But also, number three, consider your space. What does the space need? What is gonna make it feel right with all the other elements that you're incorporating into the space? A piece can be beautiful, perfectly fine as is, but if it doesn't work in your space, maybe you wanna pass it along to someone else or maybe you need to make that piece work for you. And so making some more significant changes to a piece of furniture may be the right choice for having it incorporated into the space. Join the comments down below. How do you decide when it's time to make over a piece? You know I'm reissued, I love upcycling, I love transforming something that may be unwanted into something that's beautiful but I do wonder if the like clickbait social media element and the like make a quick buck furniture flipping movement is changing the way that we're thinking about transforming furniture in maybe not the best way I don't know let me know what you think all right, y'all, last day working on these. So excited to be finishing this project up. I just need to finish off the drawer sides on the dresser piece. I'm gonna start by going in with the Colonial Maple stain that I purchased for the sides of the other drawers. I'm just gonna paint that within the design area to kind of give that a little bit of color contrast. And then I'll go in with my acrylics again around the outside and paint in all the details. When doing a pinpoint stain application like this, it's important to remember that the stain will want to bleed outside the lines. So I try to go more in the middle each time I load my brush and then work along the edges once most of the stain is out of my brush. It isn't perfect, but it'll work just fine. After laying down the base tint with the stain, I went back in with my black and burnt umber acrylic mix to add the details. This painting process felt like a weird mashup of my Gautier Y Project inspired jacket and my hand painted wallpaper. Fun at first and then incredibly tedious. I'm cutting the pattern apart in some sections to help me trace and place certain key elements, but most of the line work is freehanded while referencing the original image. I have been painting drawer sides for probably about six hours today, so I have like one and a half left to go. I'm gonna try to finish those up tomorrow. Love the way the dresser is looking. It didn't need a huge change visually, it just needed a refresh and that little bit of reconstruction, and of course the drawer sides are gonna be a fun add. For the nightstand, risks were taken. Not sure how I feel about it still. Let me know in the comments, do we like this finish or do we think I need to just spray the whole thing black and make it a solid color? If you like how these projects turned out or you just enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch and support my channel. I'll see you guys soon.
from it being the after shot. I will model. 